Hey everyone, I'm Marissa. Thanks for joining my talk today. I will talk about the Gatsby Jamstack for developers and business users. You will experience a combination of a blazing fast React based framework, which is Gatsby JS, and the headless CMS. Yeah, and in this talk, you will see how to develop and deploy a blazing fast sample project using the real time visual editor and component based approach in less than 20 minutes. With this approach, your marketers and content editors will love it, how they can play around without giving any impacts in the production environment. But before we will dive into the talk, let me very quickly introduce myself. I'm Marisa Kzaki, a developer relations engineer at Storyblock. I'm a programming and edu uh, education enthusiast, as well as a girl code ambassador, a podcaster and a blogger. And outside of my work, I organize a Japanese tech community, which is called Lilac, with over approximately 70 community members, I think. And I host online events almost every month. I really love JavaScript uh, libraries and frameworks, as well as, of course, Jamstack. So today's talk is also deeply related with yeah, those topics. But why Gatsby and Headless CMS now? So um, I have a couple of reasons to demonstrate to you about that. So first of all, Gatsby gives you the three benefits. A, it's blazing fast um, by default static site generator. B, um, by default, there is a hosting um, integration already included. And C, this is kind of the newest feature from Gatsby 4. And you can choose between static site generator, SSG, server side rendering, SSR, and deferred static genera generation, DSG. And for headless CMS, I do importance the friendliness to both yeah, content editors and developers. And yeah, that's why I chose Storyblock because of two main reasons. A, it has a real-time visual editor feature. It's editors and developers friendly. Everyone loves the um, visual elements, right? So um, yeah, why not to choose it? And B, it's nestable component blocks. So Storyblock is based on the atomic design. Um, which means that we can create complex um, architecture very easily. All right, enough talking. So let's get to the point A live coding. So let me head over to the VS Code. So here at the VS Code, first of all, I chose this time the Gatsby's um, default starter. So you can choose if you also want to, or if you want to choose a different um, starter, you also can do that. And after that, there are three packages I want you to install. The first package is called Storyblock JS Client. The second package is called Storyblock, uh, sorry, Gatsby Source Storyblock. And the third package is called Storyblock Editable. So as for the second package, which is called Gatsby Source Storyblock, this is the Gatsby Source plugin. Which, um, so it means that we need to register at the Gatsby's configuration file. So I've registered like so, and this time we need to focus on this access token. And this access token, we can get the preview API key token from Storyblock. This time I've hard coded, but don't do this at the production environment because it's not safe. But today is a demo, so I'm not going to talk about too much. But if you want to put into the production environment, I recommend you to use the um, environment variables file. So let's get the preview API key token from our main dashboard at the story block. If you log in and created your first project, which we call it as a space, then there is the screen you see. So from here, you can get the preview API key token and paste it into the Gatsby's configuration file, which I showed you um, just a few seconds ago. So after that, there are two things which we, we want to set up first. First of all, Gatsby provide as the local, um, local host a thousand. So that's what we are going to take a look at the previews at the real time visual editor here. So we want to register that. The second thing we can configure the path, uh, which is not correct at the moment. So we are going to do that. But first of all, let's register our local host at the settings in general tab. So here at the preview URLs, we can copy and paste the local host a thousand, which is generated by Gatsby and name it as you wish. After this, you can click save, then going back to the content and the name of the entry, which we want to edit. So by registering our local host, which is the development environment, then we will be able to choose the local host from this URL path. So let's choose it. And I'm, I'm guessing that we are going to see the 404 page because at this moment, 
our yeah localhost 8000 is ending with the forest slash home and we want to fix this and to fix that we can go to the configuration tab in the right hand right hand side above and from here there is the real path so from here in this input we can fill out a forest slash then let's click save then i'm expecting to see our gatsby's default starter display awesome so from now on we want to first of all test it out whether we are able to retrieve the queries from graphql or not then after that we are going to um, enable the real-time visual editor feature and to do so gatsby provides as an ide which is called graphical so i've already tested this query so let's hit this play button then now i get the content from the story blocks entry as well as the name of the entry so for as as test um, as a test i want to display this name of the entry home in our visual editor and to do so i can use these queries so let's copy it and head over to the visual editor open the file which is called index.js file and under the directory of the pages so from here first of all we can import the graphql after that i've already pasted the queries which i test which i've already tested at the graphical and next step is to pass these queries into the prop which i named this time as a data so passing the rest of the following queries like this and i parse the json like so and the next step which i want to do is to import this sp editable component from one of the packages we installed earlier which is called storyblock uh, editable and this component we can use by wrapping the components to return in the scope of the jsx so that's what i did it and passing the props like this and yeah so the purpose of doing this is because we want to display the name of the entry right so that's what i've already passed and this components variables i haven't yet declared so i'm going to comment out because it's going to uh, return as an error i don't want this so let's save it and uh, let's see our visual editor let's reload it and now we see the name of the entry so we can move on to um, enable the real-time visual editor feature and to do so there are two steps first of all we need to um, create uh, we need to create components dynamically at storyblock then we can um, enable the real-time visual editor feature and here at this demo i've already created teaser component grid component and feature component so let's create these component files at our, um, at our vs code and to do so there is a preparation so let's create the dynamic component file and at this dyna dynamic component file well first of all you can create this file in under di under the uh, directory of the components here at this file we are importing the components file which i'm going to create very shortly after and res register the name of these components and at here this scope in the conditional statement we are doing first of all if there is the component um, which is created dynamically then we are going to return the component but if there is not then we are going to return this log saying that the component something has not been created yet and at this moment i've just created the dynamic component file and none of the components or none of the dynamic components are loaded yet so i'm expecting to see this the component of something has not been created yet showing us but before checking at the visual um visual editor we need to import this dynamic component file first at index.js file and after importing it of course we need to uh, call it and i can call it directly already at the scope of the jsx but if i'm going to do that it's going to be look a little bit too much information in jsx so i don't want to do that instead i'm storing um the this dynamic component value which is returning as a final value in the variable of a um, component so that's what i'm going to call it save it then i'm expecting to see three messages displaying in the visual editor because we have three components created and there it is awesome 
So now we can move on to create each teaser grid and feature components in Visual um, VS Code. And to do so, we can create these components file again and under the directory of the components. So first of all, let's get started from something easy one, teaser. So in here, there is the prop, which is called block, and the following path is called headline. So to follow why I was already able to write it, this um, you know, data path, we can take a look at our JSON file, um, which is provided by um, story block side. So we have two sorts of JSON files. One is called draft JSON. The other one is called publish JSON. In this case, I haven't yet published because if so, this publish um, button or this circle should be green, but it's not. So I can take a look at this draft JSON. And to take a look at um, these paths, first of all, I need to know the name of the field type in the teaser. So in teaser, there is one field type, which is called headline. So let's find this headline in the draft JSON, so headline, and there it is. So to reach this headline, I just need to follow the rest of the path, starting from story, then there is content, body, and then headline. And the block prop, which I was displaying you uh, before, was already storing all these story content body. So that's why I was just writing this following headline as an additional. And the rest of the components are also following the same way to do. So this grid component contains the children components inside. That's why I'm mapping here the rest of the children's uh, component, which I can also return as the final data of the dynamic component. So that's what I'm doing it. And at the feature here, the block prop has the rest of the path to reach images, file name, name also and images out as well as the paragraph um, let's very um, yeah let's take a look at it very quickly that we are following the same page so here at the image there is the name and there is the out there is the file name and there is also the paragraph so that's what we've already passed the um, data to each component files and in the final step we need to import these three component files in dynamic component file so let's do that and save it so after that we should be able to see the three components are displaying awesome now we can take a look at all the components that we've um, declared or created at the story block uh, visual editor side but there is one feature missing which is actually the most important feature um, I want to have the real-time visual editor. So if I if I type something here, then I want the you know visual editor to follow as an edit. And if I also change the order of the components, I want visual editor to follow it. And let's do it. So to do so, we can create a custom hook from React. And to create the separated custom hook file, we can create the directory, which is called libraries lib. You can create by yourself. And under here, then there is a file which we can create for that. This time I named as story block, but you can name as you wish. In this file, there is, um, well, actually all the informations are written in our hands-on blog post tutorial. So I'm not going to cover from A to Z in this here, but I want to focus on for the um, two, two important uh, functions we've declared here. So here, first of all, um, there is a add bridge function. In this function, we are um, adding the script tags for clickable elements. So if we call this function, then we will be able to click each single element. And by clicking each element, then it should be, um, yeah, it should be directing us to the right field type, which we want to edit. So that's what we are going, that's what we are calling in here. And at StoryBlock, we have a toolkit, which is called StoryBlock.js bridge. And that's what we can communicate through iframe for this. And in the second function, which is called init event listeners in the scope. So here at this function, we are enabling a couple of events such as um, input, published, changed, etc. And by calling these two functions, then we will be able to enable the real time visual editor feature. So let's import this custom hook file, then let's call it. And at the real time, uh, not 
not real time visual editor, sorry, at the custom hook file, we are already parsing the JSON. So this is actually like duplicating um, code. So I'm not going to um, use it. So let's comment out and check everything is correct. And let's save it. Then if we are successful, we should be able to see the dotted, uh, dotted um, line wrappers surrounding the each, el each element. And if I click the elements, then now it jumps to the, you know, the right field types, which I want to edit. If I want to, let's say, increase the numbers of the exc exclamation mark, I can do that. And you saw that it's following uh, literally real time. If I delete, I also can do that very easily. And of course, if I want to change the orders of the components, I can do that very easily. And you see the results in life. Same thing for the um, grid components here, changing the order of the articles. I also can do that very easily. And yeah, there you go. We already enabled the uh, full real-time visual editor feature at Storyblock. So the last step which we want to um, see in this demo is to deploy this project into Gatsby Cloud and let's do that. So to do so, I can click publish, then head over to the Gatsby Cloud. So after you logged in, here's the screen you see and let's create um, or let's click this add a site button. And in this case, I've already created the uh, GitHub repo. So I'm going to choose import from my GitHub uh, Git repository and choosing the um, GitHub, choosing the organization name and the repository's name. Also, if I want to change the name, I can do that in here, click next. And in the next step, we can actually skip this because um, in this demo, I'm going to use the webhook. So we can, we can use the webhook in here. And to use the webhook, we can register two sorts of the variables, which is build variables and the preview variables. And basically, the values we are going to take, uh, it's only two sorts of the values. First of all, the preview or um, public API key token from um, Storyblock and the space ID, which is also from Storyblock. So I can, first of all, name this variable something like this and also create or add the variable for the space ID, the register, and I can name the variable something like this. So let's get the public API key token from Storyblocks main dash dashboard. So go to the settings, go to the API keys, and there is the public API key token. Or by default, it's not created, so you can choose the access level as public and click this create token. So that's where you can get it paste it and space ID you can get from again in the settings and this time is the general and there's your space ID so you can copy that and paste it and the space ID it's actually the same value in the preview var uh, in the preview variable so I'm going to copy and paste from what we've already did at the build variables and we need to register this time the preview API key token. So I'm going to change a little bit of the name for this preview API key token. I'm going to get the value of the preview. So here, by default, we already have the value. So we can just copy it, then paste, hit the save. Then after that, we can click this create site. Then after a few seconds, then we should be able to see the dashboard like this then get the webhook value from the webhook in Gatsby Cloud Dashboard. So here at the Bills webhook, this is the value we want to copy. So we can copy it, then going back to the Storyblocks um, main dashboard, settings, general, and there's the webhooks. And that's where I've already pasted before. You can do that now and click Save to save the results. Then after a couple of minutes, then we should be able to already see the preview from the um, Gatsby cloud. But for this demo, I don't want you to wait any longer. So I've already deployed our project into the separated um, project here. So if I click the preview URL, now you see the results like this. 
So under the, um, I guess under the 20 minutes, then we were able to deploy our project into the Gatsby cloud. And I would like to wrap up my talk by sharing with you some of the um, useful resources which we have at the story block. So if you want to see more details with hands-on information, we have our tutorial blog post um, yeah, specifically for Gatsby. And for example, this tutorial blog post um, shows you how to build the uh, multilingual blog project here uh, with Gatsby and Storyblock. Also, if you want to uh, yeah, take a look at, again, what I have demonstrated you today to deploy to Gatsby Cloud, we also have a tutorial blog post for that too here. So um, links are in this line, or just you can you, you can just Google Storyblock Gatsby blog or Storyblock Gatsby Cloud, and you will find both tutorials in top results. And there is no limit to combine with any JavaScript frameworks as long as the projects um yeah are headless. And if you're interested in to take a look at the different various frameworks, libraries, or even some of the um, other languages approach, not just the in the JavaScript, we have everything in our website. And yeah, of course, we have the sources for Next.js, Next, Svelte, PHP, Ruby, and many more. Last but not least, I'm the one talking today, but I was able to present because of the effort my team has made. So I want to thank to my team as well as to you all here um, being, um, yeah, being here today and listening to my talk. And if you have any questions re related to my talk today, my DM in Twitter is open and you can message me anytime. It's Arisa underscore death, as you can see in my slide. And if you, yeah, we have we have our own story block Discord community too. So if you want to um, talk to us with more, um, yeah, technical questions, you can reach out to us in community Discord. All right, thank you for joining my talk. If you are interested in for the editor and developer friendly headless CMS, you can access our website from this URL. Again, thank you very much for watching.